welcome to our online broadcast today. We are Global Church and I want to give you a really big welcome from wherever you are tuning in from. We've got some great stuff lined up for you today. A little bit later, we've got a talk and I really hope this talk is going to help you out throughout your next week. I don't know what kind of week you've got coming up. But I know for myself, as I listen to these talks, they inspire me, they give me some wisdom, and they also give me some peace on my situations and the week ahead. And I hope it's gonna do the same for you today as well. But first, we've got a great song from our band. So I wanna encourage you, sit back, listen to the song, and I'll hand straight over to them, and I'll see you in a little while. A stirring of faith has begun And I've seen so much, still I'm certain That the best has not yet come Jesus, you're not done with me You're doing a new thing You're doing a new thing and I see a wave of revival Preceded by justice and grace Where the young and the old run to Jesus And all the sins and held us back the late to waste Your love is never going to give up. Your love is never going to give up. You never give up. You never give up on me. Your love is never going to give up. You never give up. You never give up on me. Your love is never going to give up. You never give up. You never give up on me. I know. And I Hey there, Global Church. Hope you're doing well. I'm glad that you tuned in again uh, for Global Church Online. My name's Andy, and I'm carrying on a series on finances, on wealth. It's really titled Maximum Impact with Minimum Stress, because I believe that God wants you to have impact while you're here on earth. 
It's not just for eternity, it's that we have impact here on earth and, I, and to have minimum stress. You know, there's a lot of people with a lot of wealth, but sometimes that wealth has come with a lot of stress. <laughs> Some of us are probably today thinking, I'll have the stress if I can have the wealth. But I wanna give us a better way, a way that we can still have maximum impact, minimum stress. So last week we were looking at our financial premises. You know, what are the thoughts that undergird what we think and feel about money? Hopefully over the passage of the week, you got a chance to maybe think about that, maybe write some ones down, talk about it with a close friend or a spouse or a partner. Because honestly, once you have that awareness, you can start to change and you can start to allow God's truth in to the places where perhaps you've been living off some lies that the enemy is, has put into your thinking. It's so easy for, 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 for wrong thinking to be how we base. You know, in Globe we have some values and we talk about being Bible based, not just worldly based or what the latest fad is based. No, we talk about being biblically based. You know, what the Bible says is our, is our, is our standard. It's where we go to for the truth, not just a truth that's useful or good. No, it's the truth. And so we encourage you to, to continually look and think about how you live your life. What are the thoughts that you're building on and are they biblical? We then looked at your financial vision, having a vision for your finances, having a vision for life, but also a vision for your finances. Because when you have a vision, we can start to see the increase. We can start to allow our mind to create ways to get there. You know, once you've created a vivid image of that dream or that vision, Honestly, your mind will start to work just automatically towards that reality. That's the power of our mind. You might think, oh, that's just psychology. No, that's God's design. He designed us so that what we see, we look to achieve. Again, right at the early parts of, 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 of civilization, people were starting to build the Tower of Babel. And God looked down on men and said, I know that what they put in their mind to achieve, they will achieve. And so, and, and so it's so crucial that we realize that our minds are very powerful. They're extremely, God designed it that way. It wasn't by default. It wasn't some evolutionary journey from slime to you know, conscious being. No, God designed us. The Bible makes it clear that we are designed in his image, a creative God, a God who spoke the world into being. You know, it, it didn't even have to cross his mind. Straight away, creativity was unleashed. And the same way as we start to allow our mind to see a future, a dream, a vision that has been God given, all of a sudden things start to reorientate towards that vision. But today I wanna to carry on. I wanna look at your financial purpose. Why do you wanna be free from financial pressure, stress, lack, poverty? What would life look like if you were free? It's important that each and every one of us tap into the why, the purpose. It's no good me saying that you should go for more money or you should have more wealth or something like that. No, you need to have your own purpose. The reason that you want to move towards that vision, your vision is gonna be unique to you. God will have given you the desires in your heart and he's created you differently to the way he's created me. And so that vision will call from you something that is different to what my vision calls from me. It's important therefore that we have a purpose. It's like the fuel, the rocket fuel in the, in the rocket to be able to get us to the destination. The greater the purpose we have, the easier it is to get there. Let me just give you some worrying statistics in the UK. And this is back in the 20, 2018, so before the pandemic. But here are some of these things. 94% of employees in the UK are suffering from financial worries. That's why it's so important we as the church, as global, talk about money, that we don't just pretend it's not a problem. 94% are suffering from financial worries. 39% of adults, which is over 20 million people in the UK, don't feel confident managing their money. Stress levels are 380% higher than those without financial worries. Depression, almost 500% higher than those without financial worries, i.e. money is linked to stress and anxiety. We've got an epidemic of mental health problems, but a lot of it is the root of money. If we solve that, we probably have a lot less need for antidepressants and different things to try and cater to the challenges we have in our mind. You see, we should medicate the root, not the fruit. Here's the interesting one. Individuals earning over 100,000, so those that are earning a lot of money, 
Over half, 55%, stated they suffered from anxiety and panic attacks. 53% stated they suffered from depression, more than half. You might be thinking, well, if I was earning a hundred grand, I would have no worries. You know, we often think that rich is double what we're earning. <laughs> if you're earning 10,000, you probably think 20,000 is rich. If you're earning 20,000, you probably think 40,000 is rich. If you're earning 50,000, you probably think 100,000 is rich. It's something that's in our psychology. The reality though, is that we are all rich. Relative to the world, we are extremely privileged. If you're listening to me today, I know you're rich because you've got a phone or a television, which many people in the world won't have. But. It, it, we can be fooled into thinking, if I had more money, I'd have less anxiety and depression. 11 million people run out of money before payday in the UK. But these next two are the ones I want to really highlight. 63% do not feel they can determine what happens in their lives when it comes to money. 63%, two thirds almost of, of, of Britain, don't feel that they can determine what happens in their life when it comes to money. And 61% do not focus on the long term when it comes to money. What does that tell me? What does it tell you? You see, so many people are a victim. They literally, have, they're looking at their financial situation and think, well, there's nothing I can do. And yet I'm here to tell you today that God has given you control over your life. He wants you to be the designer, the architect of your life. He's given you a phenomenal mind that can create, as we said last week, vision, receive vision from heaven, re receive a dream and start to think, no, I'm not helpless, but I can actually be in control. You see, the Bible talks about being more than conquerors. A conqueror is someone who's taken control, not being a victim. It's not more than victims, it's more than conquerors. That as Christians, we're called to. And I believe today, one of the foundational premises you need to have is that you are in control. The result of where you are today is not because of someone else's fault. We've got to take responsibility. We can't take responsibility and have excuses. It's one or the other. And I want to encourage us all today to take responsibility. Perhaps you've been burned. Perhaps you've been swindled. Perhaps you've fallen foul of scams and different things. Take responsibility. It might not have been your fault and there's been some crooks that have, that have hurt your finances, but you can take responsibility today to say, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to move out. I'm not going to let the past dictate my future. I'm not going to allow the mistakes of others to say where I'm going to end up in life. I want to tell you now that you can take control. God made us to take control. He made us that way. Excuses are not an option. You see, because when, when we are out of control in our money, relationships suffer, physical health problems come on, mental health problems come on. I said last week, most marriages that end in divorce are due in some part due to financial pressures. But I believe that we're not called to be like under pressure. We're meant to have minimum stress, maximum impact. I mean, imagine having the resources, not worrying about your finances, having peace. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the money, it's about the peace that we have because we're in a secure position. The options of careers. You don't feel that you're pigeoned into a, a certain career and you just can't escape because you need the paycheck month after month. But having the freedom to go with where your strengths are, working according to your desires on your heart of where you want to make the most difference and impact in life. Imagine being able to have the capacity to be generous, the first person at the bar every time, getting the round of drinks in, to have greater confidence, your capability be uh, extended and, and bigger, that you become the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. You see, Deuteronomy 28 says, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. Rain in season is about ensuring that our work is fruitful, it's productive. You know, you can sow that field, but if the rain doesn't come, the crop isn't going to grow. And in today, that's so, it's, it's a true, I know we're not in an agricultural society anymore, but there are certain things that God's saying, I know you can't control the rain, but I'll do the equivalent, okay? I'll bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail if you pay attention to the commandments that I've given you this day. 
you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. You see, how do you get from where you are today to where you want to be? You know, we need to get used to building. God wanted us to build. I mentioned last week about the Genesis mandate, giving Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden, the whole of the world and saying, go, make it fantastic, build cities, create civilization, you know, create the arts, the, 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 the media, the, the governance and different things that, that will help, help us in society. You know, we need to get used to building and not just the instantaneous. Too many of us in life are looking for that instant win, the lottery, you know, windfall, you know, that lucky break. And yet the Bible talks of Jesus, that he grew in stature, in wisdom, with God and with men. And in favor, he grew. You know, there was a journey of transformation. And so, you know, the purpose for wealth is that we can be we can do so much more. If we have a lot of money, we have a lot of options. If we have a little money, we have a little options. But like I said last week, tapping into that purpose, spending some time and thinking, what is it? Why do you want to be free? Why is it? What, what, what is that, that thing that drives you? Let me give you another purpose. We're called to be consumers. Sorry, we're called to be producers, not just consumers. We're called to be givers, not just takers. You know, because when we produce, we feel like that we're contributing to society. We feel like we're making a difference. We were designed to give. God gave his one and only son. And in the same way, when we give, we're operating like God. What does that mean? It means that we find almost that place where this is how we were designed to be, designed to operate. We weren't called to just take, 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 or to consume, consume, consume. I know the world and all the marketing and advertising is trying to persuade you, yep, just keep consuming. If you consume enough, you'll be happy. And I want to say, no, if you produce, you will find joy. It's much deeper than happiness because you will know that you have served people. You have loved others. You know, we're called to be blessed, to be a blessing. But I'll talk about that in future weeks. So let me just give you a few strategies, some practicals for us. So... We've talked about premises, vision, purpose. Now it's on to strategies. It starts in the mind. You see, so often, and I just want to caveat some of the practicals, it does start in your mind. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, how much better to get wisdom than gold. To get understanding is to be chosen rather than silver. You see, the value is not in the riches but in the process, in the journey of acquiring riches, the wisdom, the understanding that we learn and we grow in as we go. And so it starts, excuse me, in the mind. So here's a practical, write down your vision and goals. We talked about having that vision. I now want to encourage you to write it down on paper. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, write the vision and engrave it plainly on clay tablets so that the one who reads it will run. You see, when we write something down, we ourselves can be reminded of it. I don't know about you, but I forget so many things. <laughs> I realize, well, someone said it many years ago, and it might have even been Dave saying, do you know what, your, your brain is not there to remember everything. Your brain is there to dream and to imagine and to have visions. A piece of paper and a pen is how you remember things. Write it down. But when we write the vision down, all of a sudden it becomes plain for you to see. There's something bold about writing the vision from your head and onto paper. It takes boldness. I know it might sound straightforward, but honestly, when you write it on paper, it's almost like it's there. It's permanent. It doesn't just fleet out of your mind when you wake up the next morning. But write it down. When we allow ourselves a brighter vision of the future, we give ourselves permission to move in that direction. So write the vision down. But you also, if, if, if the goals as well. So you might think about where, where do I want to be in maybe 10 years? That real big vision, live vision. What does it look like? You could, you know, describe it, uh, you know, as a story or you could just have some bullet points, however you're kind of wired. But write some things down. How would life look like? How would your finances look like in 10 years? You then might bring that back to maybe like three years and then one year and then Start to add in like sharing this with some key people in your life. You know, in Global we have Connects where it's our kind of community where we find accountability and assistance. It's like we need other people. 
you know, we're designed to journey through life in community, not in isolation. And as we start to share some of these dreams with the right people, because not everyone's going to applaud you for your dreams. I'm sure there'll be many that will try and pull you down and say, who are you to, to have a dream like that? Which is awful. But that's why I say we encourage come to church because then you can start to meet people that are on purpose together, that are on the same journey of trying to receive the vision that God's got for them and move in that direction, no matter how crazy it might be. You know, there's Joseph in the Bible and he had a dream. He had a dream that his, his own mum and dad and all his brothers, bearing in mind he was one of the youngest, were going to bow down to him. The sun, moon and stars even. I mean, talk about the grandioseness of it. But that was a vision from God. And then God took him on a journey, really into humility. But in a lot of areas, it developed Joseph, his character, to the point where he went from being his father's favorite son to being sold into slavery, working for someone in, and then being thrown into prison to then eventually becoming being made prime minister of the greatest superpower in the world at that time, saving millions of people through the famine that was going on. That's God bringing a vision to reality and the journey that's associated with it. But, you, but to write it down, to share it is important. Whatever your goals are, you won't get there by accident. You know, I remember recently in our business, we have children's nurseries and we, maybe just a few years ago, wrote down our vision. You know, we always had a bit of a vague vision of like, yeah, we want to grow. We want to have, you know, more success or a better nursery. And, but it was a bit loose. But as soon as we wrote down specifically what it was, all of a sudden our minds just focused in like a laser onto that objective. You see, the sun is, is, is powerful. The amount of energy it produces every day. I don't know how many trillion gigawatts of energy it produces. But, you know, the most we can get is a, is a, is a suntan if we spend too much time in or get a bit burnt. If you're a certain uh, shade of skin like me, if we spend too much time in the sun. But it only takes a couple of kilowatt laser to cut through metal because it's the focused energy. And when you start to write your vision and your goals down, all of a sudden it focuses your mind, it focuses your whole being towards that objective and to that outcome. When we did it in a business, it wasn't just for our own benefit. We were then able to share it with other people in our business. And that meant that more people could get on board with the vision. It's a bit like everyone started to row in the same direction rather than slightly different directions. Even if you don't have a business in your family, if you've got family, to have everyone on board with the vision. Even your children, you'll be surprised how much they can understand, even young ones, where it's like, you know, there's a reason that dad or mum is going out to work and they maybe can't make it to that particular occasion. Sometimes it's good for our children to see us putting the needs of others ahead of the family. That's not as a all the time rule, but sometimes we go so far the other way that we just put our, our family first every single time and it becomes a bit of an idol and our children see that. And so rather than seeing that we're serving other people, one of the facets of business is that we serve others. And even as people working in a company or when you're an employee, you're actually serving other people. And so when your children see you serve other people, they're seeing an insight into how God works. God served, Jesus served when he was here on earth. He didn't come to be served, but to serve. And so there's many things I'm sure he would have preferred to do at certain times in his ministry. But he's, even he said, it's not what, it's what I see the Father in heaven. That's, what, that's, what I, that's, my, that's my kind of direction. It's not just what my emotions are telling me or what I want or what I feel like, but there's something greater that's guiding and directing my life. So goals are critical because there's no telling what happens when you're inspired by them. There's no telling what happens when you believe in them. And there's no telling what happens when you act on them. Honestly, let your vision, let your goals inspire you. Start to believe in them and honestly start to see yourself act on them. And there is no telling what can happen in your life. You see, creating wealth is virtuous. This is a bit of a premise. So often in society, we think that wealth is evil. All the Bond villains are typically business people, corrupt, trying to dominate the world. But actually creating wealth is virtuous. Let me read this to you. Wealth is God's way of incentivizing you to do exactly what he wants you to do, which is to care obsessively about satisfying the needs and desires 
of his other children. I'll read that one more time. Wealth is God's way of incentivizing you to do exactly what he wants you to do, which is to care obsessively about satisfying the needs and desires of his other children. You know, we talk about that we're called, you know, Jesus, in, as he's meeting with some of the religious people, they ask him, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus' response is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love others as yourself. These two commandments summarize the entirety of the law. So as we start to love God, we also start to love others. And as we love others, it's about serving others. Business is a vehicle. Creating wealth is a vehicle of serving other people. If you don't create value in someone else's life, then you won't have a job for long. But when you realize that what you're doing in your employment creates value, whether you are sweeping in the supermarket, whether you are a postman, whether you're an architect or a doctor, whatever career that you're in, a builder, it doesn't matter, but you are ultimately serving someone. And as you serve them, you're creating value. And people, and then whether it's your company or whether you're self-employed and the customer, they then say, thank you for the value you've created. Here is your paycheck or here is your uh, you know, payment for the, for the invoice that you've, you've served us. You see, creating wealth is virtuous. As we focus on other people's needs and desires, you will never ever be sure of what you yourself desire and need. And God designed money to be an instrument that both rewards and motivates us to do his will. It drives us forward. It's almost like it's not an, it's not an evil thing. Money is a tool to help move us in the right direction. God uses money to take us out from our current situation into new territory, into new ground. You see, don't be afraid of when there are opportunities. Pursue them, explore them, knock on the door at the very least and say to God, close that door. If it's not right, just close it. But I'm going to go and knock on. Too often we go the other way. We're waiting for a direction, for a sign from God, thinking, well, if it's God's will, you know, my boss will give me a promotion or I'll be relocated to another job. No, I want us to use, go on the, what we know. We, we, we have 98% of God's will in the Bible. And we just, we can operate off that. And as I read the Bible more and more, I see that God wants us to go and bring his kingdom to the world, to a broken world. He's not, he does, we don't need to wait for a light in the sky. We just need to go. <laughs> the, the world's vast and your community around you, I'm sure is vast. And so let's go with what we know. You see, you're in business. Believe it or not, whether you have a business or a company that you work, that, 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 that has your name on the, on the building, but you are in business. Because the company that writes your paycheck every month is not your employer, it's, they're your customer. Adopt this mindset and everything changes. You become free from the daily grind because as you start to see that the company is the one that actually, they're my greatest customer because they give me my paycheck every month, hopefully on time, I'm gonna treat them so well. And you might be in a customer service industry, think, no, my customers are those that I'm looking after. You know, um, the people coming in to buy the groceries. But actually, no, your customer is the one that is giving you the finance. We, when you adopt that mindset, it's, it's honestly, it's completely transforming. And you might think that's quite a strange thing to consider, but really the, the company that's passing or giving on your paycheck, as you start to look after them, they can continue to look after you. Well, you might say, but oh, Andy, you've got no clue. Honestly, they're corrupt, they're evil. My manager, if you'd met him, you wouldn't want to say good thing to him. But the Bible's really clear. The Bible says, work as if working unto the Lord. Work as if working unto the King of Kings. It doesn't matter whether your boss is corrupt. It's not about their performance. It's about your performance. The Bible, we can't control what other people do and how they operate, but we can control how we operate. And when we start to operate godly, righteously, things can start to happen. God can start to move and use us in ways that we could never have dreamt or imagined. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. You might be working for human masters, but don't. Imagine you're working for God Almighty. 
Consider how you treat people. Consider how you make them feel. I know that can seem like a bit of a soft thing, but how you make someone feel often determines how much value you're creating. It's not always about hard facts like, you know, um, the commodity and, and how much I've got of something determines how much value it is. Starbucks is a great example. We can all have a cup of coffee in our home with some Nespresso, Nespresso uh, sorry, Nescafe and just a, a spoon, a scoop full of it, probably costs three pence. Or we can go to Starbucks and pay three pound thirty for a coffee. Why do we go to Starbucks? Because of the experience of how they make us feel when they take our order and the environment that they've created that makes us feel like this coffee's special. <laughs> it better be for three quid. But that's, there is something powerful when you start to consider how do you make people feel? How do you treat people? Consider it. People feel an obligation to their customers that they don't feel to their employer. And so often we forget that our employer is our customer. Let me just finish on this. Self-serving versus serving. It's a premise shift. You know, seeing money as something you chase versus money being something that chases after you. Because when you just solely pursue money, that's selfish. But serving others is selfless. And when we serve others, we start to create value. We become valuable in the eyes of the one we are serving, and they will then exchange money for the value that we create. I want to encourage you to think about how you can serve your boss at work, how you can serve your company better. Allow yourself to be humble and even have that question, that conversation with your boss. Is there anything I can do to further support you and the business? Even better than that question is for you to think about, is there something that could further support your boss or the business that you have already done some of the thinking work, the legwork in terms of coming with an idea or a proposal or a suggestion that you yourself will outwork. Don't be the person who says, I've got a great idea for you <laughs> that I think will transform everything. No, you be the person to carry the weight, to do the thinking, but then also be the answer to the suggestion. Try and think through the challenges and the problems that your company face. As you start to do that, you'll become so valuable to them. Be a support, be a strength. Hebrews 13, 17 says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy and not a burden for that would be of no benefit to you. You know, we can quickly find promotion when we actively serve the people around us. I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes looking in our business for people that are going to think at that higher level. Often we wait for a promotion before we perform better. I want to say no, do it the other way around. Just perform better. Give, be generous. Don't wait for the pay rise. No, start to perform as if you're worth the pay rise. And all of a sudden people start to see value. Even if you think your manager at work will never see it, know that God will see it. Because God is watching. God is looking. He's, he's looking over the world for those that are going to be righteous. I wonder how you work when no one's looking, when no one's watching. You know, I remember working at uh, the hot dog company in the center of York. And I remember when I was working there thinking, you know what? I could be like listening to music, you know, my own personal taste that maybe other people in the street wouldn't appreciate. I could have been on my phone, scrolling social media, just kind of thinking a bit bored. There's not much custom going on around me. But I remember instead thinking, I want to just try my best. I want to do what's right. And I remember like being stood there, almost trying to like keep myself up straight, trying to catch people's attention. Why? Because I wanted to try and make a sale. I wanted to smile. I wanted to encourage people to come along. All right, I wasn't quite as uh, overt or extroverted to be able to say, hey, hey, get your hot dogs. Not that I'm American, but <laughs> you know, but I remember trying my best. I don't, wasn't getting a commission. There was no additional reward or incentive if I sold out. But I remember thinking in my heart, I want to do the best with what I've got. I want to be able to do what's best for the person that I was working for, because I was grateful that they'd given me a job. And while I was serving those customers, I was aware that really he's the most important customer, because if he succeeds, then I, get, I carry on having a job. And if he doesn't, well, then my job's at risk. But I remember thinking, I want to do things right. And I want to encourage you today. Think about that. Think about how you operate when no one's looking, when no one's watching. You know, are you someone that thinks, you know, just take advantage of some of the freebies or things that are scattered around the office thinking, ah, oh, they can afford it. 
or actually you're someone thinking, no, I'm going to work diligently as if working unto the Lord. You know, I'm not going to get distracted with YouTube or social media. No, I'm going to put in the hours. I'm going to put in focused work and attention. I'm going to do my best, whether someone knows I've done my best or whether they don't. Because the thing is, I know that God is watching and I know that I will be true to who I am and I want to be a person that I can trust. So I've said a lot today, but please tune in for next week because we're going to be carrying on. We've got some great things lined up, but I can't wait to, to carry on share, sharing some more practical things in how we increase our wealth or how we grow our finances. Take care and I'll see you next week. We hope that talk's been relevant for you and it's given you some things to think about. And if you do want to get in touch with us, it is really simple. All you need to do is click on the link in the description below, fill out your details, and one of our team will be in touch with you. If you did say the prayer at the end as well and you've responded, we, we would absolutely love to hear from you and we'd love to get some stuff to you. So again, make sure you click on that link and fill out your details and we'll be in touch straight away. Just a few things before we wrap up for today. Don't forget throughout our week, we are meeting for connects and dinner parties and we're meeting in loads of different locations. Connects and dinner parties are where we come together in smaller groups. We discuss the talk that we've just heard. We hang out with one another over food and drink and we just have a really good time doing that. And we would love for you to join us. So make sure you get in touch for more information. Again, really simple. Just click on the link in the description below and we will be in touch with you straight away. To find out more about Global Church, or if you would like to give to Global Church today, then make sure you head over to our website. The details are in the description below. You can click on those and it'll take you straight to our website. Well, that's it from me today. Have a fantastic week and we will see you same time next week. Have a great week.